You're live. Good evening. Let's see who's on. Let's see who we have on tonight. Welcome, everybody. Who's ever on? Say hello. Good evening, Shonda. Shonda's on? Yep. I must be a little delayed. Is it on Grace Station or is it on your page? Grace Station. Let's see. There we go. Ha ha. Okay, there we go. What up, Shonda? What up, Cheryl? My pastor's been in my sprites. <laughs> he don't want Mountain Dew anymore. He goes to get my sprites. Just keeping it real. <laughs> hey, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We're going to wait for some people to pop on. Wait for a few more We're people. We're waiting to on a few on. more people. <clears throat> Ask how everybody's doing. Yo, yo, yo. All right. There's Pastor Joshua. Yep. J Bar. Pastor J Bar. All right. Now we're starting to get some people on. You ready? Waiting on you. Waiting on the star of the show. Uh, <laughs> this, this is your show. Mine's on waiting Sunday. On the star. Mine's on Sunday. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, man, who else we got on here? We got some new names on there. There we go. Yeah, let's talk to some people. It's been a while. What's up, Chuck? Let's go, let's go. He's drinking soda, It's Josh. Gary drinking soda. Oh, wait. Now he's drinking the, my soda. This, I'm drinking her soda tonight. What? I don't know. Not, I, I, don't just, know. I, just I, need, I just needed a, 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 needed a change. <laughs> How you doing, Bebo? Good evening to you. Good to see you on here. Who else we got on there? Man, we got a bunch of people on there tonight. That's that's awesome. We are going to. Uh, what do, What do you got set up for tonight? A good question. It's what are we talking good... about the broken world? All right, y'all. What are we gonna do? Somebody tell me what we're gonna do tonight. He's at work. I'm at work, guys. Okay. Everybody say hi to everybody. That share, share, share this. Invite your family and friends on tonight. You know, we've been talking about some good stuff lately and we're gonna stay right in it. we're gonna stay right into the the broken world, broken people, broken church. Yes. You know, and <clears throat> I already know how it can relate to people because I mean just when I think about my experience in growing up how you know one of the things I was taught was about heaven and hell right and really that was the main focus is are you going to go to heaven or are you going to go to hell and nobody even stopped to say Jesus loves me you know <laughs> nobody even said anything to bring forth the love of the father mm -hmm. but it was always about Heaven and hell. Are you going to make it? Are you going to make it? Yes, that's the only thing that matters. And, you know, <laughs> as as we grow, as I was growing older, it almost, it, it really just pushed me away from the church, honestly, because I never thought I was good enough. Now, taking somebody like yourself that grew up in the church, mm -hmm. 
how did that relate with you? I mean, how did what relate? But heaven and hell being tossed at you. Oh well, that was just <laughs> a common thing. Yep, yeah, common <laughs> it thing. It was very common. They think you weren't going to, you weren't going to church. Right. And if you weren't going to church, but I grew up in church, so like it just became a lifestyle to me. I was never like outside of the church, <laughs> so. I don't know and that's how what I say outside of the church was for anybody. That's what I, I yeah, that's what I find so interesting is you got so many different perspectives, so many different people that went through so many different experiences, and that's what I'm excited about even bringing people together in town meetings and stuff because I want to I want to learn other people's views and if you guys have anything that you would like to share, I mean, I want to I want to learn more of what other people's experience in church now we know the world's broken right and we know that growing up in a world system i mean it didn't take long for me to figure out just how broken the world was but out of that world broken world came a lot of broken people and then i noticed a lot of people say well i'm gonna go to church and i'm gonna start getting my life right i'm gonna get myself right because they're broken but then they end up going to church, right? And 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 they don't get fixed there. And and that's the really thing. That's the thing that I'm really focusing on this season. I'm believing God and giving us the wisdom and the knowledge, because I see the church is broken and it's not helping anybody. And that's the strangest thing. You got churches everywhere. You got services going on everywhere on Sunday. All this great worship all the all this words being preached and and people uh very i shouldn't say everybody but very few people i think are really getting changed or or are they really seeing the manifestation of god's power and his finished works in their life because that's that's what i really want to see in people's lives right. i want to see i'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours of studying his word and, and the Holy Spirit knows this because I just prayed about it today. I'm not going to spend hours in His Word just to, not to see change in my life, your life, or in people's lives. If I'm going to get behind, you know, microphones and, and cameras and get in a pulpit and preach, I want to see the power of God start to change lives. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to, just to, uh, to do the same old, same old what I've seen in this region for years. It's time for change, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, being someone yourself, uh, like, I know going to an apostolic church, it kind of got into a routine. You guys just basically did the same routine, didn't you, for year after year after year after year. Well, that's kind of what life is all about. <laughs> it's about kind of like routine, right? Right. So, we go to work every day. We well, do yeah. the same thing every day. You go to church. <laughs> you enjoy the the worship service. You enjoy the choir. You enjoy all of that until until you know that there's more to the work than just or more to church <laughs> rather. Right. More to church than just going to church. Actually, you start living a life. I don't know. It, it, it's just been different for me. I don't know. Yeah, and and I think what I'm, you know, I'm wanting to inter I'm wanting to interact with people out there. Like Josh just said was, he said it was like hell sitting in a Pentecostal church. He says it was like hell sitting in a Pentecostal church. What did you mean, Josh? And, and <laughs> what the, made it hell? The people? Yeah. Hey, Kathleen, good to see you on here. And Robert, glad you guys have joined us. But we're just kind of open talking tonight about, you know, the broken world, broken people, broken church. We know so many people that, you know, this world is designed to break you. And before you know it, you have hurt people and hurt people, hurt people, and, and people trying uh, people trying to um, get themselves right through other people or get, try to get acceptance through hurt people. And then people go to church to try to get accepted and find deliverance and find wholeness. And like Josh says, some of the churches, like, it's like 
going to the sheep going to the slaughter. Well, it, it depends and, on what people are going to church for. Well, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of people go to church for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And, and been taught, like some people grow up in church, so that's the life that right, they've and, always and, learned. And, right. So you have that group, and they don't mm -hmm. see anything wrong with the people. It's just more of this is lifestyle. Like yep. this is their community. It's like going to work. It's like going to school. It's like any of that. It becomes a part of your life. So, you know, that's pretty much how I grew up. So yeah. I can only go from my experience. Well, yeah, and I wanted you to share yeah. a little bit. That's open up and share of your experience in church. Just like, just like I, people out there, I want everybody to share. I, I want to come. I'm, I'm, I'm searching. I'm searching to see all the different perceptions of church, of how people, you know, got messed up in church or, or uh, messed up in the world or, or messed up in, you know, I was. Just growing up, you know, people say, hey, will you go to church? And I'm thinking, man, I, if, as soon as I walk into a church, the roof's going to fall in. Because I had this perception of what people told me of how holy that you had to be in order for you to even get accepted into a church. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, but nobody never stopped to show me the, the unconditional love of the Father. Nobody even told me about any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all about heaven and hell and fear. And are you, you know, you got to get your life right. You can't be doing that. And, and it, I mean, is it that way in everybody's life? Is it, it I know my mom. No, it's a conditioning. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a conditioning. But that's, like I said, it's a conditioning like yeah. any other institution, right? Right. And more so, though, because you feel this one. It's supposed to be supernatural because you're dealing with godly things, spiritual matters. Sure, sure. And, you know, I don't know what it's like to experience, you know, being an alcoholic or, you know, being addicted to drugs or or having, you know, lost, you know, lost one of your children or, and, and just like we were talking earlier about somebody, you know, something didn't work out. If something didn't work out in a marriage and then all of a sudden they're mad at God because, you know, God uh, God punished them or because their marriage didn't work out. So all of a sudden they just quit going to church because they don't believe God is real or God puts favor on people. And these are all the topics. These are a lot of good topics of what people's experience that, you know, that I've experienced in that out of other people is watching people grow into a knowledge. But here we have a good news. Here we have the good news mm -hmm. that God says, Jesus says, I come to give you abundant life. I come to die so I can give you this abundant life. But there's a disconnect. There's a missing link that I see in people's lives in, in most or the majority of people's lives that I see. Uh, from where they're at to the abundant life, and, and what does abundant that's life that's what I want to connect. What does the abundant life? Well, look I mean, look to you. So maybe, to me, yeah. What, yeah. Do you think what does the abundant life look like, you guys? To me, actually, I go if I go by His word, uh, the the blessing of the Lord makes you rich, so you're financially stable. Not to say everybody's going to have billions of dollars. But like but the blessing, yeah, nothing mm -hmm. missing or lacking in your finances, you know, uh, having good jobs, uh, having good marriage, having unconditional love, mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically what the, the word can provide in your life. But but then again, I also know that there's there's people that you you can't just sit on the couch and expect. God to drop, you know, or the brink truck to pull up in your front of your house. That's I mean, not I'm not saying That's he can't. <laughs> All things are possible, but, you know. That's not I, get, I, unrealistic. I, I'm no. real. Right. Like, right. I think people really need to step out in the favor of God and do things with their life and and expect God to move in their life. But I, I think God will meet you where you go. Well, then that, there is the favor thing. So, mm -hmm. if God favors you, mm -hmm. Then it seems like he'll just rain down on you money or whatever you need, right? So, mm -hmm. if, I mean, without you having to do anything. I, I guess that's the Santa Claus type of way oh, of looking no, at it, right? Oh, no, I don't look at it that way. But that's unrealistic. That's my point. 
Right. Because the favor of God will give you wisdom. He will bring wisdom. Like It's like having supernatural insight mm -hmm. into how to do a thing or, right. you know, how to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. A work to do because I mean if God were like that he everybody be sitting down doing nothing you know and God would just be <laughs> pouring down the money and pouring down the food you wouldn't have to get up and cook you wouldn't have to do work you wouldn't have to do anything right exactly but that's really unrealistic no, because right? I yeah I really believe God wants us as you know I'm just gonna I'm gonna, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm been kind of beating around the bush okay get to the point <laughs> God is putting this is a season that God is bringing forth revelation and yeah. he's giving me wisdom and, and we're all going to join together in this wisdom mm -hmm. and we're going to bring forth the glory of God. We're going to start walking in, in the manifestation of what God and the gifts that we have. Everybody that's watching out there is a member, you know, Corinthians says that there are many members of the body. So there's many members of the mm -hmm. body and mm -hmm. then... There's gifts that each each one of these members have. There's different gifts. And as pastors, our job is, I really feel like, is to cultivate and get these gifts to come out of these people that God has put in our path so they can operate in these gifts instead of them laying dormant or being quiet somewhere or or so caught, here's the biggest part, so caught up in the world situational stuff, whether it be in drugs mm -hmm. or their bad relationship at home or whatever, you know, you got to get them out of that, the worldly thinking and mindset and everything that the world produces and get them more focused on Christ and the gifts and the thing so they can operate from the gifts versus settling for something that the world is giving them. Or yeah, most of the time when people are lacking, because mm -hmm. they have allowed a thought to, to, to defeat them. Well, or yeah. they bought into a, a, a falsehood. Right. Something that's not true. Right. So as pastors and as, um, you know, care, we're carrying this gospel message of freedom and mm -hmm. liberty in Christ and all of the, 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 the problems that, or the, we say, the hindrances that yes. the world can put on you thought-wise. We're here to free that up. I mean, because if you can get someone to think that they can do the impossible yes. with God, you know, then they'll be ready to, to do whatever. They'll be able to believe enough to do something, right? That's, because if you can say, I can't, yeah. I can't do it, you know, you're already defeated. Now, as as now we're starting can, to right? open up. That's what I was, I'm starting to feel the spirit. Really right, you would be up. like, I can't, I'm defeated, I right. can't do it. And then well, all of a sudden. You can talk yourself, anybody can talk themselves out of a blessing. I, I'm, I really love like positive thinkers because if, if you're a negative thinker, you can pick apart any situation, even a job that might come, you know, a job might rise up and God is going to bless you in this job and all of a sudden you start saying, well, I don't like the hours or I don't, have to, I don't like to drive that far and all of a sudden you talk yourself out of the blessing. It's mm -hmm. a very negative mindset instead of just being positive. Hey, maybe God wants me there. Maybe you're going to go there and minister to someone. Because, see, God's all about souls. He's all about leading people to the kingdom of God. It ain't just about putting you in a job for it. Yeah. It's not just to put you in a job and make you wealthy. He has, I, I've seen this purpose. many a times, mm -hmm. there's a purpose while you're there. Right. And you'll always find out that there's somebody you're going to minister to. Uh, God like strategically say. puts you in places to mm -hmm. minister to people time after time. Oh, yeah. That's even people in, yeah, right. Even people in Walmart, there's time. I mean, there's times the Holy Spirit told me, hey, go give that lady 50 bucks. And I went and gave her 50 bucks and she, you know, started crying. And, and she said, you know, I was here on my last five bucks trying to feed a family mm -hmm. and trying, you know, mm -hmm. and, and see, so. If I would have stayed in my old season in a different part uh, of the city, I wouldn't have been at that Walmart that time to give that lady 50 bucks. Yeah. So God is strategic in placing us in places to for what our purpose and our gifts to be used. Well, but, just like uh -huh. I met you. Right. Right. It's well, yeah. Like we, how we met, or how the Lord, Lord brought well, you to my house. Well, it's just like it's just like how John probably met Josh, and and, and Ed met 
Ed met uh, Kilm yeah. and, mm -hmm. and Chuck met Penny. Mm -hmm. These are all strategically mm -hmm. placed by God for and, and, and Jean met Renee. Mm -hmm. Strategically mm -hmm. led by God to mm -hmm. bring forth the purpose to be used by God and bring forth those gifts. See, what I feel in my spirit is people are getting lost in situational times with the pandemic and things that they're dealing with that they're not operating from the kingdom that's within them, but operating from the fear that that's settled in mm. to them, like you said, to a thought, thought, thought process. A negative thought that has changed or changes your mindset in right. the Every, atmosphere. Shoo, I feel the spirit now. Everything around, everything around you, everything around you is a thought process. The shirt that you're wearing, the car you're driving, that all had to go through the thought process. So whatever you, whatever you think of or, or whatever you connect your mind to is what becomes a part of your life and i want people to start connecting into the spirit so the spirit can manifest the things of god around you versus things that you settle for or things that you allow in your life that maybe god didn't want to be well, a part of your temporary, life temporary yeah temporary things mm -hmm. so i mean I think we linger longer than we need to be sometimes in places and, and, and things that we should, you know, like that's zapping the energy from us because mm -hmm. that season may be over and God wants you to think well, yeah, clearly, think more, think outside the box, challenge yourself to do something different, you know, and that will motivate you. Sure. And I've noticed like even in the pandemic when we're at home, it's like there you can be creative by, you know, maybe you didn't have them cooked or bake the cake in a while or something like that and just giving you that energy to bake a cake and then now it's something you didn't have time to do because you were at work all the time or whatever it's like that kind of stuff just it energizes you it keeps you active it keeps your mind going you're not idle right you're and, not just yeah. watching the, the news and it's giving you all these emotions really that mm -hmm. some stuff you can't even control because it's going to happen. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You're just sitting there watching it happen. Right. <laughs> right? So you can't control it. You can get mad about it. You can say all these other things, but really, that's not going to change anything. You know, yeah. It I, has to play I, its, its part. It has to play its part. We haven't even got to a word yet, I'm, but I'm feeling this so good. So, yeah. because yeah, God is in the brokenness, and that's the thing. You have the broken world, broken people, and broken church, but God is still there with us. And he's wanting us to tap, I mean, to take, you're going to have... You're going to have situations happen in your life. There's no way the world is there and it ain't leaving. And and what the world brings to you, it's not going to change. That's always going to be a part of your life. But what we're saying is is, is going through the thought process to bring forth the, the, the spiritual part of who you are and God that's in you. To over It overtakes it overtakes the mindset of the world, the carnal mind. It overtakes that, and 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 you recognize, hey, this is not, this is not a, this is not a defeat. This is just a setup. This is a setup for God. God loves to show off His glory in in the lack. He loves to, He likes for you to reach out in it and 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 believe Him for the big, like you said. Believe Him for the big. Believe Him for a change. Believe Him. Thank him and be content where you're at, knowing that God's bringing forth something in your life that's about to change, because he is a God of new beginnings. Wherever he puts you, he yeah. is something you're probably going to learn out of it, right? There's a learning yeah. aspect of everything right. to everything as well. So, like, I, I see how Paul was like, whatever state I'm in, I'm content. If I'm this way, I'm good. Right. I'm that way, I'm good, good, because he knows God has put him there. Mm-hmm for a temporary season, usually to learn something, uh -huh. usually to carry over a mindset or to overcome a mindset that that is trying to challenge you to give up on on things or to like yes. throw in the towel, to like look at things in the negative. When he's trying, that is where he's trying to push you forward to keep you in a expectancy, in a, a time Come of on. show me more Lord, okay. How am I going to overcome these challenges? Right, yeah. And then how you overcome them day, day by day, right? It's a yeah. daily walk. It's a day by day thing. And then I'm noticing if you get in the Word and you just read some scriptures, 
like that will hint that will just bring out it'll keep you ignited it keeps yes. the fire it keeps that that joy there right because the hope it keeps right. the hope alive because there's it too keeps much faith to, moving to, to draw because it's the same old same old every day you get up and do the same old thing every day you know right. especially if you're working from home it's every day you do the same thing so it's like you have to have something else mm-hmm. now to like really motive to keep you active to keep that light in you that's, that that's, joy in you and i've found just reading the yeah through the word that's what i'm saying Mm. you have to tap out of the world you You have to tap out of the world in your mind it's Mm -hmm. all done in your mind Mm -hmm. you if something if something arises up to you and it's going to disturb you immediately you have dominion over that if you just step don't feed it. Don't feed the monster. Step out of sight of that mindset and step over and say, you know what? God's word said that he will supply my need. God's already made a way. He made a way in the, even in the wilderness yep. or even when it, it looks desolate or even when it looks, you know, like every all hell's come against you. God's about to get some glory. And I know this time after time after time I went through these trials just to learn that. Oh, yeah. Just to learn that your <laughs> God is going to show up in oh, your situation. Yeah. And as soon as, I mean, there's a reason why the word says to speak to those things that be not as though they are. Because, see, God wants you to speak to those things. So a, a life and death is in the power of the tongue, and the faith of God is within you. So he wants us to, he wants us to bring forth. The manifestation of what he has for us by believing and speaking those in our mindset, believing it in your mindset, not looking at that situation. Because, like I said, the world's going to throw stuff. The world's going to, people are going to, if the world's broke and people are broke, and even churches, they're going to throw curveballs at you. Now, when we get to the world, it's the world is the world, and, and then you got. Then you got people that's of the world is just they're just a, a a product of that environment and they're hurt. And then, like I said, you got the church. And honestly, I, you know, I hate to harp on the church, but I really started to notice over the last five or seven years that if you not truly in faith or the truth of God's word, you got yourself under a curse. So people are going to a curse trying to find their 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 wholeness mm. and they're doing the works of the law like Galatians 3 10 says whosoever is under the works of the law is under a curse so they find themselves going to church trying to get themselves out or trying to tithe themselves out they're trying to sow seed they're trying to serve they're trying to go out on the street corners and preach through a bullhorn or whatever you call those big things they're, they're trying to go out and feed the poor they're doing all these things good works because they're thinking God's going to bless them that way but they're under the curse and they find themselves year after year in the same situation that they've always been. Why? Because they went to a church and the church is broken and they're not leading people to the truth. So it's when, a truth that they, sets you free. When they look around and they go, I was a part of that. I did all of that and it didn't even get oh, me. Oh, how many anywhere. times? How you, many know, t- you think about, oh, I did all of that and it didn't really get me anywhere. <laughs> at the, at <laughs> where it, I thought it would get me, right? right? right. I thought it was going to bring me completely out, but it pretty much did mm. the opposite. So it just shows you that that putting your trust in the right place, which now, I mean, mm. having come over into the knowledge of the grace message and the rightly dividing the word. Come on. It has energized me just to be able to read the word the way I read it now, just to see it differently than what I saw before. Because what I saw before, or to read the the message behind it and really get into it where I understand what the person is writing about them. It's not just some cliche stuff that you can Mm -hmm. take to, to formulate a good message about. It's an actual story or thing because these were ordinary people just like you and I who were empowered by God to like see greater than what they had been seeing. Their right, life, like, right. you know, every writer of the Bible was some ordinary person, you know, who, who had life issues and things that happened well, to yeah, you they know, were, and all they that. were in they were a world like anybody else. Yeah, know? they were in a world so just like Gene said here. You know, he says, "Yes, I believe the world is an illusion." Yeah, that's all it is. It's just it's a world system that's designed to destruct. 
it's 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 designed to really to get you to a place to give up and and wear you down you mean? It'll wear you down but see sometimes that's the best thing for you because when you went when you tried everything else that's when you turn you really turn and surrender everything to God what I've learned then then God begins to operate in your life and I believe God allows a lot of that to go on in your life so you can get to a place where you don't depend on those illusions and you depend on the power of God that's that's what I'm who I feel the power now I want to see the power of God um, I want to witness that when people come in they get healed I want to see people come in and their lives get changed and I know it you know it might have took them 10 or 20 years to get jacked up and it might take some time for the renewing of the mind to go through that metamorphosis because I know coming to know truth is you know this coming to know the grace message and the truth that we've been taught through the spirit is is the key the ultimate thing that man has set me free but i also needed to see some things happen until i got there i wanted you know i needed to see somebody i you know i've laid hands on people i raised someone from the dead i laid hands on a lady and that was death in one air and it popped open see that gave me faith that gave me uh that gave me saying you know god is real he used me in many different situations to bring healing to people and and honestly i got so focused on the truth which is not a bad thing i kind of got away from that missing that link that that bridge that gets people who's lost all hope over to knowing the grace message see it's kind of like the lord showed me here i am preaching hey this is the difference between law and grace right mm -hmm. the, the, here's the difference between that and you got somebody that came in that you know that might have cancer and that they just got to report they're on cancer and they're coming to church and and they're believing god for a healing and they look up at barker and barker's preaching law versus grace which is important but it's not that it's not touching them where they're at and I, I feel this is a season that God is bringing us back to show forth people the power of who he is till they become to know the truth so they gives them that gives them belief that gives them hope that gives them courage that you encourage people you encourage people in these that that's not so um, knowledgeable in the word you know well I think well, I'm about to preach but, now. But, but I think though also that everybody in the U.S. probably <laughs> born over here have has heard of Christ, have have you know heard of hell and mm -hmm. heaven and hell and going there or not you know and mm -hmm. sinning, being in sin and uh -huh. God not gonna bless you because you're a sinner and all that stuff. But I think that the 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 grace message also puts people in that believability that god doesn't hate them anymore well yeah you definitely. know what i mean so yeah. i think and that gives it, them it, reason to say well okay so mm. you mean i'm not wretched and the things <laughs> that i've done caused this to yeah. happen to me and all these different things you know and i look at all the people that were back in the day with jesus and all them they were all you know sick had the palsy there was a lot of people that had diseases and things they were born like that or whatever so they go well who's seeing him or his mother you know the right. blind guy who was blind Come he on. was born blind and they were questioning whether or not you know that his family sinned and that was the reason why he was blind right like maybe they sinned or he sinned and they, no it wasn't the case you know it was so that god could get the glory Right. So, I mean, that message of the gospel, even just that, when they say, oh, no, n neither one of them sinned. He was born this way so God could get the glory so that Christ could, you know, mm -hmm. try to get somebody else to believe. You know, they had been in such a state of not hearing from God, not hearing from for 400 years. Right. That now was an opportunity for God to show himself to these people who needed it, you know. And so... The conditions that people are in are, I think, sometimes for God to show the glory and to manifest that healing and glory, you know. Exactly. So, I mean, 
All of it plays a part. Yes, and I think it's it's a balance. Yeah. It's all a, of it plays a it's part. It's letting the spirit use you and and be a and, and have a balance and and just let the spirit use you in in service in the way that he wants to move. I think a lot of times people people hinder the spirit when God's trying to move in a certain way and they're, and you know they're caught up in a lot of world stuff themselves to where they don't allow that spirit really to move and I've seen that I've actually felt that in the spirit before but I'm I don't know I just feel yeah. I'm, I'm feeling something in the spirit that we are headed into a new season I'm telling you all you're going to see God's glory hit the place. You're going to see God's glory hit your life. Anybody that's listening to me today, I'm, and I'm prophesying in this, you're about to see change. You're about to see change in your life because I know we're in a season that God sends forth voices for you to listen to that gets that gets you focused on the spiritual things and the kingdom. It's His good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and it takes a voice that gets you off to get you off the focus of your situation whether it be finances and sickness. whatever sickness and get you Chronic focused pain. on Christ because he says by his stripes we were healed I mean it's everything that God has done for us he's already done for he's already done it now it's us to bring that in in by faith and believing and, and expecting like you said earlier, you, you have to expect things to happen in your life. You know, there's a lot of people that's, there's a lot of people that's, uh, you know, they go to church. Man, here we go again. I, I think a broken church. I was taught early on in church that I, I was at the altar begging God to move. I was, you know, God, I, I'm so sorry I didn't pay my tithes last week. Can you move in this situation? You know what I mean? Because that's, that's the way that you're taught. And God's looking at you like, wow, man. I mean, you have been... Why, remember what we said? You pray a mess. Yeah. yeah, you're praying a mess. that's why I think yeah. preaching is the difference between mm -hmm. where where we were thinking we were, were and where <laughs> we really are. Right changes the mindset so that's what i was saying it yeah. changes how you think right and that's uh -huh. where healing comes in come i on. think healing is able to come in because one the stress isn't in there anymore you know no, I, it's not I, I you know i taught biology in school mm -hmm. as a teacher and um in college rather and i i know what stress can do for, for someone to be thinking wrong it just releases all these hormones and <laughs> These neurotransmitters that get you thinking in a rut. Now, you may think, oh, that's just natural. But actually, there's a component here that emotions are triggered by. And they trigger and they tense your body up and it causes cancer. Yeah. If you're anger, angry and bitter all the time and all that kind of stuff, it can bring um, a lot of unforgiveness can lead to cancers in people, you know, because they just have this root of bitterness in them. Yeah. And it just doesn't help with the with with the flow of how your body is supposed to operate in conjunction with the spiritual side of you. Because the soul has been awakened so long and was empowered, it's really killing the body. But the spirit is here to give life to the body. Yes. So yes. the spiritual thinking sets you higher above your natural realm in the thoughts of what you think. Uh, uh, the, what you feel or how you feel the world should be, mm. and what it is actually, because. You really approach it in a different mindset. You understand, like God, Christ was, uh, he understood who he was dealing with. He understood how men's heart were, you know, so men's heart were. And so he wasn't caught up in that. In fact, he was like, I know what you're thinking. I know how you're feeling. And what is, I'm not going to let your thoughts enter, you know, enter me as well, if yeah, what it's... you're saying about me is true. Because they were saying he was the devil. Yeah. He was not the son of God, you know, his own people. He would have really let that get to him. And and I'm glad you said what that. What purpose? He couldn't have fulfilled his purpose. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. You remind me. He says, you know, he says, you guys are from beneath and I'm from above. You guys are of this world. That world there is cosmos. It's actually, it's the word system in the Greek. 
you guys are of this system. Your your mindsets has a been, been conditioned. captive or conditioned, conditioned. to a it's really system. A conditioning. It's a conditioning to a system. Yes. And he says, I ain't from this world. I'm from above. Right. But he was there to get us to renew our mind from, from this world way of thinking to tap into a kingdom mindset so we can operate from the kingdom, so we can have heaven on earth now, so we can have that manifestation of who he is because as he is, so are we in this world, it says. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. But if our mindset is still conditioned to a world mindset, you're not you, being as he is. And what happened to you and all the things yeah, that all, have happened all to you that, in your now life. You're going, come right, on. Well, let's talk now, about that's that. That's good. A lot of all people the get stuck there. That have, uh, what people have done wrong to you and why they did this, that, and the other, right? Come on, y'all. So... If you dwell on that, like I, I could dwell on all the things that happened in my life over the years that I wasn't expecting it to go that route because I was in the church. <laughs> if they right. had gone a certain way, I would still be where I was. I would never have progressed to now where I, think I am. We all can say and that. I think everybody, mm -hmm. I see it has it, it had its purpose into thrusting yes. me into my purpose, into mm -hmm. furthering me in my you know understanding and walk with that so i don't look that look at those things as if oh they were there to harm me but they were there to harm me enough to make me want something different so okay so be it god uses that to even move you to the next level and next phase of your life otherwise you would stay stagnant you would stay in a rut it's like persecution comes so if i were to if, if allow myself to be embittered by what people did and and say well you did that for my hurt did i would stay stuck trying to that's, you know get revenge on them or wanting yeah, god to to, a, to get revenge on them for me and all this stuff you know sitting there trying to wait for something a, to happen yeah and the whole time i'm mm. over here in bitterness i'm over here mad about it and if nothing's going if, if he's not doing it yes. i'm watching for him to do it right <laughs> <laughs> and nothing has happened and i'm right. like well, why did you you know they did wrong. They did me wrong. Gotta about pray, my you got to fast, pray harder, do all these other things. It's not about that. It was about <laughs> you. Just like Joseph's brother, if you think about it, his brothers put him in position to help save, you know, eat his, them from the famine. So right. that's what I look at it. Is it Was it for my hurt or was it for my, my advancement? Yeah, definitely. And for, all of it was. I for believe advancing. God turns it all around for the good for your advancement. He takes all that brokenness, but but I think there is a season. I definitely know this. I I know there's people that come to mind. They're so stuck in what happened to what? them throughout mm -hmm. their childhood or whatever, yeah. and and they have stuck their identity to that. I I hey I'm a I'm a child because. You know, uh, I'm a child of this, or I got raped when I was this age, or and, and, and they're holding on to that identity of what the world produced or her people gave them, and it yeah. keeps them from stepping into who that God says they are. It's like and poison. It, it's it like is poison. It's like kryptonite. It, it, you you that's, know, like Superman. <laughs> yeah. The fact kryptonite. is, you probably got hurt well, from this broken world well, and this broken people mm -hmm. and the broken church. You got hurt from one of those. I know. But see, that's well, a fact, but that doesn't mean it's the truth. The truth is, mm -hmm. like my brother Gene said, it's just an illusion. That's just what your mind thinks. The truth is, is what does, how does God see you? God says that you are in him, in love. You've been, you was dead. You, you died. You were buried with him, resurrected with him. And you are holy. You can't get any more holier because he says you are holy as for I am holy. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on your past and a lot of people do that they get stuck in that identity and 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 they just i see it time after time on facebook you know they talk about it they talk about it and they talk about it and years are going by it's because they have they they they're caught in it they're caught in that identity and they have not stepped into the things that god has for them you know i see well i'll tell you this it's funny that mm -hmm. God will come and find you. Yes, he will. I he, mean, he'll leave you there. Mm -hmm. He can leave you there for a long time. 
and you will operate where you are you won't have let you wouldn't have let it get, get like I, I was operating in it for like 16 20 16 to 20 years and it was like <coughs> lord what's going on you know but i never lost who i was it never crushed me it never like made me feel as if it was all my fault or any of that kind of stuff it's like I, I had a higher thinking like to not let that go down because i had a prayer life for one that i talked to the mm. lord all the Come time on. so it wasn't like that was something that could have just overtaken me it's like because i had the power of god working and operating in my life so it was like you know lord you allowing this you letting it go down it wasn't it's nothing i could have controlled Yes. There was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't Come stop on. it if I wanted to because you allowed it for a reason. Come on. And now once you get over to where the reason is, you go, oh, now I understand. Well, right? yeah. I understand. And it makes it tolerable. You mean like when so. your Boaz shows up? Yep, and you can let go of it. Like, yep, yeah. Yeah, because if things had turned out differently, I probably would have been bitter. Maybe. <laughs> Well, and that was on. my fear. I yeah. was worried, Lord, I don't want to be mad about any come of on. this. Oh, don't make Shoot. me mad because I feel like all this mm. effort I put into loving and being forgiven and all of that. And, that that's, and it, it, yeah, that's it, the key thing is to know that God is not done with you yet. Even though I don't care what your situation looks like, God is not done. You know, Cheryl, God love her. You know, Cheryl, I read, she said four years ago. That, you know, for, she came to Grace Station four years ago. Just a quick testimony of her. And, and you know, I do remember, I, I, I love Cheryl. Uh, she's our front row heckler. But, you know, to see the change in her in, in four years. So there, there's been, God has used us to bring change in, in some people's lives, which is awesome. But then I also see other people that the, it, it, the Grace message changed people. But then there's other people that... Uh, they wasn't. I guess they just wasn't ready for that grace message, and and they actually, you know, come against you, and you're here. You are giving them a key to freedom, giving them a key to truth, and, and you can't take it personal. And, and you can't take it personal. That's you just, the other thing. You, you just keep driving the bus. Some people get off and stay a while, and some people get off. You just keep driving that bus. But the key thing that I know is, you know, making a difference in people's lives is what we're about, obviously. You know, that's all we focus on in ministry is making a difference in people's lives. But I'm here to tell you that I want, I'm searching for more, not just from our ministry and us, but mm -hmm. from the people who's a part of Grace Station. I want mm -hmm. those gifts, I want those gifts to manifest, I want to you know the prophecy to come out of people's mouths i want people to lay hands you know there's some people that i haven't spoken to yet but god has showed me some things that's real close to me and i know where they're headed in this ministry and god's about to do some big things in this ministry and in those people's lives they might have count you out or they might have put you on the back row somewhere but i'm here to tell you you're stepping into a season that god is moving you to the front because he takes the last and makes first, right? He takes the people that's that um, he takes the the. I'm thinking of that scripture, but he, he to confound the wise. He takes the the least of people, and he takes these people because see they're able to receive the glory of God because they haven't had nothing in their life, and he takes those people and he gives them these special gifts. And then they're able to confound the wise, which I see as, you know, prideful religious institution or, or uh, pastors. So he takes these type of people, a no-name people, and he's going to use those people to bring forth the glory. Because, see, they're going to receive Christ more than a prideful, uh, more than a prideful person is, you know? Well, pride... Pride is the pride you is know a more. Poison, well, pride can be damaging in that it makes you feel as if you above God and you don't know, or you know more than He knows, <laughs> and that you could, you don't ever have to keep learning. Come on, Freddie. So you just yes. maintain that posture of, Lord, I'm I'm an open I'm open to whatever you have, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. You don't try to dictate which way you go. You have an idea, but God had the plan, so you just. Let go of your idea and then go with his plan and you have, you've yeah, won it. Yeah, I mean, that is so, 
That is so good. And and honestly, you know, we spent the last few years of teaching law, you know, bringing forth this hyper grace message, and it set people free. You call it hyper. Yeah. <laughs> I call it hyper hyper grace because other people who don't see it calls it that, it's or gre 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 greasy grace, or what all these it's names. Greasy grace. What does that mean? <laughs> if it's hyper grace, I'm for it because I know what it's done for my life. But I also see that there's a season forth now is to bring people and cultivate people into their callings and into their and, and get the gifts coming out of them and and man God's going to do some great things this season I really feel it's coming and you know yes oh I, okay there's Freddie hey Freddie how mm -hmm. are you man good to see Freddie on here tonight from Philadelphia but you know what forever my uh, yeah there's so much in my spirit and I'm just trying to let the spirit lead because there's so much I want I'm feeling in this season there's so much I want to say um, you know it really began uh, about two weeks ago the Lord spoke to me he says it's great that you find me in scriptures he said but it's powerful when you find the living God that's within you and and that rattled me. I'm telling you, that brought some revelation that people have the they have the living God living on the inside of you, but you have this world hindering you and the situations of like we talked about or experiences in your life. You became a product of that environment, and and, and that gift and that living God is you know it's not bringing it's not showing forth because the mind has to come off of that identity or those experiences hey it, it's a fact i mean i know i know you i know people went through something and you're in a world that's going to take you through divorces or somebody's going to rip you off and somebody might cut you somebody might shoot you some, some people give you diseases some people might give you diseases some you might even yeah. you might even got killed but you ain't have to worry about that then like we do but <laughs> but you going through you're going to go through all kinds of situations in this world but being able to tap into that kingdom and putting on that that's what activates that's what activates the things of God and into your life I've been a witness of that I mean look at you know we go back to our testimony and I know some people have heard bits and pieces we never really went through it all we could write you know two or three books about it but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, everything that God has done in, in, in our lives. But I know he's done wonderful things in your life and in the brokenness. And then, you know, he, 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 God he blessed the broken roads that led you to certain things in your life. But we're focused on this season. I mean, yes, we're going to always preach the grace message. I want to get people to know the eschatology because it's very, it's very important to know what end times mean and the true belief of what the bible says about that but it's also it's a time of season for people to operate from the god that living god is, out of that belly shall flow rivers of living water and and that's what makes a difference in your life because it's made a difference in ours mm -hmm. so i want i don't want people just to come to our service on sunday and and hear how good God is from us and then go into a world system and, and struggle from week to week to week to week. It's time for change in their lives. It's time for change. He's a living God. He's already, and I believe when you activate that faith mm -hmm. and let his glory be be manifested, it's, it's a let your gift. Don't let nobody... Man, I'm talking to somebody right now. Don't let anybody talk you out of your gift or make you question what God has called you to do. There's some people that I know that you've been told things throughout the years that God's going to use you for this and that. But see, you have let hurt people, hurt churches, and other, uh, other people from this world system put in your mindset through thought process that, that you are not that type of person. Well, if I went by that, then I would not be preaching today because I definitely, there was a time, it, it took God to get me where I'm at. It took God to get, I know it took God to get you where you're at. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to somebody now, God, 
God, his hand is on you, and he's called you to for a purpose. You're not here just to clock in a, at a job every day and and go home and you know take a shower and cook dinner for people and go to bed and get up and go. That's normal. We don't do normal at Grace Station. We're asking for the Spirit of God to manifest in life. We're greater than normal. We're abnormal. We are not usual. We're unusual. We're uncommon people, mm -hmm. and that's what... We're going to start operating in these gifts. And we're not just going to sit back and, and, and be mediocre life, mediocre life week after week after week and year after year, as I see in, in the region. Okay. You with me? Yep. Yep. It's you are with me? It. It's where God, it's not, yeah, it's time for the unusual. It's time for the uncommon. Amen. It's time for God to show up and show off. And I ain't just saying that. I mean, I, you know, I was saying, I was speaking earlier, since the pandemic and churches has closed down, all you see is a bunch of prophets on Facebook. I mean, mm -hmm. you can go, you can stroll through your Facebook, this prophet, you know, where's all these prophets coming from? And, you know, and, you know, I guess because there's no churches and so everybody mm -hmm. says, all right, I'm going to get on Facebook and I'm going to be heard and, and you know people are trying to get hurt you know everybody's trying to be hurt out there and i understand that i really do yeah i really do but it's funny it, that it's a season now i mean i i mean i could turn on facebook and just go three or four times up and all of a sudden you'll see two or three prophets i mean uh, that's why all the time i'm kept I'm not even on Facebook. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> I got a little free see. time right now. I'm during my vacation month, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's still working. But yeah, I get to play on Facebook, and <laughs> but you know, and I get to study. And and the biggest thing that I feel, I, and I'm just being real with you guys, is I'm not here to play church anymore. I'm not here to you know to 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 have the just enough to get by in mm -hmm. in people that we minister to or people that minister to me. Well, we want uh, the fullness. We want the fullness and that's of God. Us yeah. Wanting it for them. Yeah. But I think God knows what he's doing. Yes. And he wants to do it for them too. Yes. I and mean, it, it we, comes in increments. I think it comes it, as he you can yes. handle it mm -hmm. in the seasons like you come in. Mm -hmm. It's like we're getting you through keeping you in the right mindset right. as come things on. are happening mm, in your come life. On. I think that's the thing. It's more so Keeping people in the truth and Come staying on. grounded in the truth. That's the key thing. So is, that they mm, won't start thinking the wrong way. Yes. Which would be back to the old way Come of thinking on. and Come the defeated on. way. Now, right? So we maintain now, the truth of the gospel. Which now the prophet is speaking here. Who Ooh, feeds, I feel it. Everyone mm. who feeds from that truth Come on. are able to undergo and, and to endure endure the the walk that they have to deal with whatever they got to deal with this god is taking them through it any word that comes through this life giving life to them that's all they need yes and so that's what we hold on to the truth and that's what the word is about is keeping the truth mm, come on in 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 operation to keep that first and fourth foremost and never fall backwards from that because we already always been in the other now it's like now we see the light, like Paul did when he was on the road to Damascus. Yeah. And he was operating under an old covenant mindset of thinking. And then the Lord showed himself to him in well, a different way, way that he never had seen yes. before. He couldn't go back to being the same way again. He had a, a, a revelation of God. He had an encounter with the Lord himself, you know. And you can't, you that truth, even how he felt about himself at that moment that Christ would actually come down to him and talk to him off of his throne when he came from the heavenly throne come and spoke up. to him I think that was life changing to, to, to see that God cared about him and single him out enough to do that yes so just that alone gives you the gives you you, you know it gives you um value it gives you the, the the value that you need to endure any situation, and that's why I think kept Paul. What kept Paul going through all of the stuff he had to go through, all the stuff he you know talked about, and then also to keep the others that were with him going in that direct Timothy and mm -hmm. encouraging them, him to do it, fight the good fight of faith, because 
this is where we're headed. This is what what's going on. So whatever God wants to do, like he, it, 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 where it says he wills to do it, and, and he will do it if he wants to do it. Whatever he wants to do. But we're going to hold on and move on to the mature, yes. you know. And, and that's the thing is I feel grow. God wants to do it. Yep. God wants to do it in your yep. life. He wants that abundant in your life. But it does take a mindset of tapping out of the world mindset, a worldly carnal mindset into the spiritual mindset yeah, wait, of God. Yeah, awesome. So it can manifest so you can actually move in that power. Because it says in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able. God's able. we got an able God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all mm -hmm. you could ever ask yeah. or think of according to that power that works within you. Well, you got a, you got this dunamis power of God, living God on the inside, and he's able to do it. But he, it takes the... It takes the Apple energy again. and the mindset of you to lean on those things and, and trust in Him and speak for things and move by the Spirit. Just like you yeah. know, just like we're doing a renovation at our church, we're believing God for a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's really what it takes, approximately, to do a renovation of our, a, a complete renovation of our church. And we're doing it in increments, and now now we're believing God for ten thousand dollars to come in to mm -hmm. do the stage. And uh, I think we just put up something for people to donate, which is, you know, if the Spirit leads, give. I trust God that He's going to supply that, and I know He will. And, you know, like the last night, you know, somebody gave a donation, praise God, somebody gave a donation. But God's going to do it, so I don't even worry about it. I'm going to believe God for it. I'm going to believe that He's going to do it, and... If, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have this big building, honestly. So I've seen him work so many different ways and works. And he always seems to work things out a way that you don't expect. Right. It comes in some way that you know it took him. It took him to do it. He's not going to do it an easy way. He's going to do it a unique way. So when it does happen, it, it you're going to say, man, that was God that did it. Time after time, right? When somebody shows up at your house, and you know, and it, it takes God to do that. Yeah. It takes God to a tree to fall on your house. It takes God to send in people that jacked up your house so you can send in a Boaz so he can come in and treat you the way you need it to be right. treated, right? right. Right. Yep, you want to put your home? You want me to too? Yeah, no, I ain't trying to get you too much. It's, it was, it, it was, was the God, God in me. I know. It was well it was worth my it. My baby. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I love you, baby. It, it, I appreciate you. If so. anything else, it was it was worth one day to hear her say for real, and she knows what I'm talking about. But it's funny we got some, we got so many stories to share every time but, but we're oh, out yeah. of time our dogs beginning to whine to whine at us uh so we're gonna i'm gonna end in prayer i want everybody that's out there listening it looks like we got a lot of people listening tonight make sure you share this we're gonna spend a season and you know it's kind of real life issues you know we're gonna spend a season in real life issues and and I want people to share, man. Just like Gene, Gene sent me, Gene sent me a thing through Messenger about something that he experienced with a couple of angels, mm -hmm. and immediately the Lord told me a season of celebration for him. So the Lord gave me a word for him when he was didn't quite understand the dream, mm -hmm. and, and and when he read what I when he read what I told him, he knew he knew that he's in a season of celebration because he had a couple of angels show up. Uh, above mm -hmm. his bed mm -hmm. and they were talking and, and they were laughing so the lord showed me that, that he's in a season of celebration amen but we're going to pray and uh we're, we're in the season to bring forth real life we want to hear everybody's real life situations or things that you're going through anybody needs prayer mm -hmm. make sure you put it on here so we will definitely what pray for, what do you pray? pray for his wife pray for okay her white blood cells drop. Hey, Freddie, let us know. Uh, I can't remember your wife's name exactly. Let's uh, uh, give us her name, and we'll put that on our Sozo family prayer list tonight. We'll have everybody praying for her. But, you know, right now we have enough people on here 
Yeah, we have enough people on here right now that we could go ahead and lift her up in prayer. And anybody else that needs prayer, make sure that you put it on here. That we will definitely, you know, we ain't these people that say, oh, well, I'll pray Amy. for you. Amy. And Amy, all right, we're going to lift up Amy in prayer. Okay. But we are not these people that say, hey, I'll pray for you and don't pray for you. Yeah. I mean, how many people actually do that today? Mm -hmm. I just feel there's so many, oh, okay, we'll lift up prayer and they never do. Mm -hmm. We actually want to pray for people because prayer changes things, and I know it does. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pray for each and everybody that's watching tonight as we come together. Uh, Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Your word says in Matthew 18, 19, and 20 that whenever two come together and agree as touching anything, that it shall be given. And the prayers of the righteous, and that's we are, Father God. We are the righteous. We come boldly to the throne of grace, Father God, in a time. We lift up Amy, Father God, that everything that's in her body that's not of life, that's yes, not of you, Father God, has to go yeah, now. Yeah. We speak complete healing from the blood that you yes, shed on Calvary, yeah. Father God. And I send forth healing, the healing power of your anointing, Father God, of your power that speaks through my voice, Father God, yes, to bring forth healing to Amy and anybody else that needs healing that's listening to uh, listen to us right now, yes. that they receive it by faith, that we stand on it, because your word cannot return unto your void, Father Father God, I lift up Jean and Renee, I lift up Josh and Shonda and Kim and Cheryl and everybody's watching in life, Kathleen, I lift up everybody that's watching, my brother Chuck, hallelujah, things that you are doing in my brother's life, Father yes. God, we thank you, Lord, we thank you for what the Holy Spirit yes. is doing in each and every one of their lives, Father God, mm -hmm. that's keeping them safe in a time of trouble, yes. Father God, we continue to, we continue to ask you, Father God, to do what only you can do yes. in this world system, that we tap out of this world system and we seek you, Father God, that yes. we come to the, mm -hmm. the throne of grace that's not of this world, mm -hmm. that it's in a realm of the Spirit, Father God, that we can walk into and step into this realm mm -hmm. and receive everything that you have done for us, Father God, mm -hmm. the finished works, that we are no longer led yes. by the lie, Father God, that we, are, we walk in this truth, mm -hmm. we walk in this light, that we are no mm -hmm. longer in the darkness that yes. where we we walk from the we eat of the tree of life and no longer we are going to eat of the tree of knowing good and evil father god we just lift up everything that you have done we thank you in advance father god we thank you in advance father god for the healing to amy we thank you for the financial situation the way that you're going to make in people's lives we thank you in advance father god for what you're doing in their lives i speak it forth now that you're you're about to get the glory hallelujah i speak the favor the grace the unmerited favor jehovah jireh on people's lives right now father god that everything they touch is going to prosper for the kingdom of God that things that looks like it's not going to there's no way out father god that you're going to show up and show off in their life father god i speak right now that somebody shoot the depression right now depression right now i come against that i know who i'm talking about father god i come against that right now in the mighty name of jesus christ that your hand is on her father yes. god that you're going to show her who you are and the power of who you are and there's going to be no more depression no more anxiety father yes. god that they had an experience that they're no longer going to be a part of that they're yes. going to walk in the kingdom yes. they're going to walk in this kingdom place yes. father god that brings forth who you are mm -hmm. father god and they're going to give you all the glory and they're going to give be a witness yes. to many father mm -hmm. god of what you've done in their life yes. father god Father God, I just love you and I just praise you. I love your unconditional love that you have for me yeah, and my yeah, wife yeah. And, and all the people thank that's you. listening. Father God, I thank you for thank the you. righteousness. Because of your righteous, we are righteous. And because you are holy, we are holy. And just because of who you are, that's the way we are in this broken world, yes, Father God. That we have a mindset that continues to walk in that revelation knowledge that the spirit feeds us father god that it overcomes the carnal world yes. that we're able to do whew, exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think of father god that you are working through us and we love you and we praise you and whew, i felt the spirit on all of us man i'm glad you guys come together tonight we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need somebody to shout hallelujah out there. You know what? 
my wife here, she's got some type of anointing on her life that's it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have you in my life and Aww. by my side as we do ministry. You know, the Lord Aww. the Lord wanted me always to point out that his hands on you and the revelation and the mm. teaching ability that he's given you that's mm. changing people's lives mm. is increased. We're in a season of increase. I'm talking to everybody now. Mm. We are in a season of increase. The pandemic's done left as soon as your mind left it. Mm. Hallelujah. Favors come up on you as soon as you your mind has left the, the distress and the things of the world. Favor is up on your life. Hallelujah. Yes, yes Father God, I believe, I believe that you are our healer and I believe Amy by your stripes she is made whole and we get a report real soon in Jesus precious name amen amen God bless you guys thank you for joining us tonight we will be back Sunday at 11 o'clock and uh, got anything else I thank the Lord for you babe uh -oh. <laughs> see what happens see what happens we, we gotta go <laughs> love you guys love y'all